Day 26 Sabbath Rest The fourth commandment says, Remember the Sabbath, to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor, and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Hebrews 4.9 There remaineth therefore a rest, or keeping of a Sabbath, to the people of God. Revelation 1.10 The Apostle John said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Mark 2.27 The Sabbath was made for man. And Acts 20 verse 7 And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, continued his speech until midnight. The New Testament, especially in light of the Ten Commandments, the moral law of God, clearly teaches that there remains the Lord's day, a special day for the Lord, a special day to gather together, to break bread, to hear the word of God, to rest body and soul in Christ. There remaineth therefore a Sabbath rest to the people of God, written in the New Testament. There is a Lord's day, even for the Apostle John. The Sabbath was made as a blessing for man, for our benefit, for our joy, for our worship in the Lord. And which day is this? Which day? It is the day that Christ entered his Sabbath rest. The first day of the week, the resurrection day, to never suffer again. He rested from his work of redemption and atonement. He would never be humiliated again. He was exalted, starting on the first day of the week, the first new covenant Sabbath day. Jesus said in Matthew 24 regarding the distant future, long after his resurrection, long after his ascension to heaven, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Now, of course, Christians have been debating for centuries about the end times, the second coming of Jesus, the timing of it, the timing of these events in Matthew 24, the great tribulation, etc., etc. But all Christians would agree that this description is many years after the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ, and even the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, the preaching and ministry of the apostles. This is years after, many years, and yet Jesus taught that there would be a future and perpetual Sabbath day. There would always be a Sabbath day that we must keep, that we must obey. The fourth commandment written, in the middle of the Ten Commandments, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. It tells us to remember, and it's not the one commandment of the Ten Commandments that we should forget. We are to remember it because we're so prone to forget it, to forget to set time apart for the Lord, to do what God has appointed in regard to giving a portion of our life to him, because we're so selfish with our time, and we, we forget the worship of God very easily. And you see, this is just a very, very quick case that keeping the Sabbath day holy, even for new covenant Christians today, is still necessary, it's still required, it's still commanded of God. It is on the Ten Commandments, and it should be our great delight. It is to bless us and to bring us nearer to the Lord our God for public and for private worship. 
Question 58 of the Shorter Catechism says, What is required in the fourth commandment? The fourth commandment requireth the keeping holy to God such set times as he hath appointed in his word expressly one whole day in seven to be a holy Sabbath to himself. Question 59. Which day of the seven hath God appointed to be the weekly Sabbath? Answer. From the beginning of the world to the resurrection of Christ, God appointed the seventh day of the week to be the weekly Sabbath, and the first day of the week ever since, to continue to the end of the world, which is the Christian Sabbath. The Protestant and Evangelical Church has classically taught that the first day of the week is the Lord's Day, or the Christian Sabbath. And so it is a day of holy rest, it is a day of worship. It is the Lord's day, not just the Lord's morning. You don't go to church in the morning and then forget about God the rest of the day. You go to the mall, you go to the cinema, whatever it is. But morning and evening should be for the worship of God. Question 60. How is the Sabbath to be sanctified? Answer. The Sabbath is to be sanctified by a holy resting all that day, even from such worldly employments and recreations as are lawful on other days, and spending the whole time in the public and private exercises of God's worship, except so much as is to be taken up in the works of necessity and mercy. And so we should go to the Lord morning and evening. If your church doesn't have an evening service, Ask your pastor or attend a church in the evening in order to be extra blessed, doubly blessed on the Lord's Day. Spend the whole time in pu public and private worship with your family in prayer and Bible reading, reading edifying books, forsaking nonsense recreation, not working or doing business on the Lord's Day, but focusing on the Lord, resting in Him, body and soul. Pastor J.W. Alexander wrote, If your life is a busy one, you will find a sweet refreshment in the Sabbath. Except those hours which are bestowed on others or on public worship, let it be your endeavor to spend the whole of the sacred time in acts of religious improvement. These may be sufficiently varied to prevent weariness or boredom, but stories and diaries may absorb too many of these precious hours. You may measure your spirituality by the manner in which you habitually spend the Lord's day. All eminent Christians have been remarkable for a conscientious use of this holy and blessed rest. Fashion and amusement, the growing laxity of the age, gives peculiar force to the exhortation, be not conformed to this world, Romans 12, verse 2. The rule of the majority is corrupt and dangerous. It is to do as others do. The consequence is mutual harm and perpetual declension in the church. You will find professing Christians who, as they increase in wealth, constantly enlarge their liberty. It requires a keen eye to discriminate between their pleasures and purchases, and those of the ungodly. Apply, if you can, the divine maxim, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 1 John 2.15 The young communicant, who is often asking how near he may go to the brink of sin, and yet be safe, is near to his fall. Observe the families which have trod the path from ancient strictness to fashionable Christianity, and you will find their children, one by one, sliding away uh, to looser forms of religion, if not to utter carelessness. The same principles apply to expenditure in dress, furniture, goods, and luxurious living. Let your moderation be known unto all men. And you see these different portions that I quoted come together uh, in Sabbath keeping because Sabbath keeping trains us for godliness, trains us and prepares us for the week of holiness, focusing on the Lord, going to the Lord regularly, keeping set times. You are trained for godliness and purity through Sabbath keeping, which is the pure worship of God on his holy and blessed day. Isaiah 58, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. And you see, this 
passage is in the context of new covenant prophecies and blessings, the times of the Messiah. Isaiah 56 and the Sabbath makes this very clear. Even the eunuchs are now able to approach God's house for acceptance and worship when they couldn't under the old covenant. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Make it your delight. Pursue God diligently through his means. He is given a blessed Sabbath day. It is the Lord's day, the resurrection day of Christ. He rested that day. So should you. Be blessed in the Sabbath day. Forsake all worldly amusements. Focus on the Lord and you will have victory over your evil habits.